What's good, Josh Cameron? Another video, share like that. Comment down below if you want to see the next one. Like and subscribe if you're brand new. Now let's hop right into the video, man. So this video right here is gonna be about how to self improve. Um, so you always hear, you know, self improvement is the key. Self improvement is the key. But a lot of the times people don't even know where to begin or where to start. And you'll be hearing like, oh, get in the gym, get in the gym. But you have to realize that self-improvement is a lot more than just the gym. It's a lot more than just getting big and getting shredded, getting strong. You know, that's a part of it. That's just, that's like the first most basic step to self-improvement. But you have to understand that it's a, a longer journey, right? They're very simple steps to self-improvement because it's a very simple thing to do overall. But the issue is that a lot of people don't even want to engage in the act in the first place because a lot of people are just lazy. And they just choose not to self-improve. It's a choice that you have to make and it's a journey that you have to go on and be in it for the long run, bro. That's why um, you know, it's so important for you to self-improve for your own reasons, for yourself, not to do it for others. Because if you do it for others, your resolve is going to be weak. And at some point along that journey, you're going to fall off of the trail. You're going to fall off of the path. That's why it's important for your reason to be self-improving is strong. All right. But we just going to hop right into how to self-improve. So first thing is the gym, right? The most basic first step that you could possibly do. Now, people say the gym, but it's really just getting in shape. Um, getting in shape is obviously just good for everyone. Taking care of your physical health, uh, that's all good, you feel me? Whether you go on runs every every week or something like that, maybe you bike ride uh, every two, three days, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, it doesn't really matter as long as you're in shape. As a man, you need to be in shape because imagine you're in a position to where you have a family, right? You have a wife and kids and you are not in shape as a man. Somebody comes into your house and tries to rob you. They, you know what I mean? They got sticks, you know what I mean? Or maybe they just got knives or whatever. What are you going to do if you out of shape as a man? You can't even do nothing. You can't even run and go grab something out your safe because you out of shape. You're going to run and he's going to hear the big ass footsteps. It's going to sound like an earthquake when you're running over there. You're going to be out of breath before you even get to see dude. Now he already done robbed you and left the house. It's too late for you now, bro. You have to be in shape as a man. Or imagine you underweight. You 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 a stick. You a stick and a and a big ass and a some 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 dude, some big burly dude. Or you even gotta really be big and burly, but just a dude with some size on him. He run up on him. What are you gonna do? Your girl's right here. What what, what are you gonna do? He smacked your girl on the butt. What you gonna do? You undersized, bro. You gonna throw a punch, it's gonna land like SpongeBob. Nothing. You feel me? So it's important to be in shape. It's important to be somewhat strong. Now, the reason why the gym is brought up so much is because when it comes to weight training, that is a good way to set goals for yourself. And they're very clear goals. Like, for example, on bench press, let's say you want to hit 275 on bench or let's say you want to hit 315 on bench or whatever the case may be. These are little goals for yourself. And the reason why little goals that you set for yourself are so important is because they train you to start putting yourself first. Right. They train you to start. Uh, uh, focusing on yourself and meeting your goals. You know what I mean? It, it, it's kind of like it's training you for what you have going on in the future. You might have a plan for 10 years down the line, right? But if you've never even accomplished the little goals that you set for yourself already, you have no idea what it means to fill a goal. You have no idea what it means to go through adversity to get to the desired outcome. So weight training is extremely, extremely beneficial to those type of things. On top of the fact that being in shape in general and getting in the gym has all kind of mental benefits, emotional benefits, uh, testosterone boosts uh, for men, you feel me? And you just start looking better overall. I mean, the gym is just literally, or getting in shape in the gym is just literally the cornerstone of getting yourself in top physical condition. But understand that as important as it is to get in shape and be in the gym, that is still only the first step. Yeah, it might raise your attraction level and stuff like that. And obviously you wanna do self care and stuff like that. But understand that it's still only the first step because your physical improvement will only get you so far. Right. Even let me let me break it down in terms of women. Right. We know in terms of women, if you're a guy, your looks get you in the door. But your personality is what keeps a woman. Right. You have to understand that the looks is pretty much it's 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 the front end of the battle. But it's also the most shallow part of the battle, because if you enter into a relationship, yeah, your looks got you in the door. So they was important. But the rest, the 80 percent of the time, 80 percent of the time it's your personality. Right. So there's other things that you need to work on. OK, so that's step number one, getting in shape in the gym. Step number two is finding your purpose. Now, this is a very 
um, interesting thing because a lot of people will tell you, you know, you got to find your purpose, find your purpose, but no one really goes in depth on how to find your purpose. They just kind of tell you, find your purpose, and they just kind of leave it at that. But I'm going to literally break down how to find your purpose, and it's a lot easier than you might think it is, bro. So when it comes to finding your purpose, just start off by thinking about things that you just like in general, things that you like to do, just things that you like, okay? And it can be the most broad topic. Maybe you just really like movies or maybe you really like sports or whatever, okay? Try out something within that field. So like sports, I know a lot of people like sports. A lot of dudes like sports. Try out some sports, play some sports, okay? Just start with a broad topic. You like movies, maybe try out acting, try out uh, uh, directing, you know what I mean? You could just start with a very broad topic and just try things out. I mean, that's really the biggest part. You have to get over your fear of trying. Once they, that, That's really the biggest blocker to people finding their purpose. If you don't get over your fear of trying things, if you don't get over your fear of searching for a passion, searching for a purpose, then you're never going to reach that point. So you have to just go out and try things, dog. And you can't be afraid to fail. There's going to be some things that you try that you're just not good at. But you have to realize that, th that there's even things that people are not good at, but they love to do. And that's okay. You don't have to be the greatest at whatever you do. But if you love to do it, then keep going because that is literally like, that's your passion. You have to understand that God blessed you with that passion, bro. So it's okay to not be good at it. But if you love to do it, then keep doing it. And eventually you'll probably get better at it. People just don't want to put in work anymore. If you're not good at something off rip, people just love to just give up. But you have to understand that that's not how life works. No one's just good at everything off rip. You have to learn things. Yeah, sure, some people might have a natural affinity for some, uh, for some things like sports or whatever. But ultimately, even people that are naturally talented still have to work to get better. That's just how things go. So you just gotta get over your fear of trying stuff. And another thing is this too. Some people think that when it comes to finding your passion or your purpose, that it has to be some super profound thing. Like people think, oh, my purpose is to uh, just, just like, like you think it has to be some kind of crazy, super profound thing that sounds like it could be your thesis for your senior class project in college or whatever the case. Your purpose and your passion does not have to be that deep because what you have to understand is that God blessed you with it regardless, bro. So it doesn't matter. It can be spreading a crazy, uh, a crazy message to the masses or it can be something as simple as, oh, I just enjoy doing this because your purpose, right? Let me make things clear. Your purpose is within your passion. Your purpose is why you do the thing you love to do. So let's say that you love to play chess, right? Why do you like to play chess? Maybe it's because I'm a competitive person. So your purpose would be, uh, uh, my, your purpose is to be a competitive chess player. That might sound, uh, uh, it might sound very shallow and surface level, but if that's what you love to do, then that's your purpose. You have to understand that most people are probably not going to have a crazy purpose that just sounds so profound. As long as it's not worldly, then it is a valid purpose. And a lot of people don't get this. So they kind of deny themselves. Oh, that can't be it. That can't be it. Bro, just do what you like to do. Do what you love doing. It's that simple. And then have a re then there's a reason why you do it. If it's just because you enjoy doing it, then enjoy that. God gave you the blessing to enjoy doing that. So indulge in it. That's still glorifying God because you're using the gift that he gave you. The gift was that you love doing this thing. You don't have to do anything crazy, bro. You, you really don't. So for let me give you an example, right? With this YouTube stuff. Understand that the reason, the, the way I came into my purpose was not it's never going to be instant it's something that you have to develop over time most of the time it's not just going to be instant oh this is my purpose you have to do your, the thing that you love to do in order to find a purpose eventually so with this youtube stuff i knew from a very young age i was always interested in being somebody i've always interested in being some level of public figure so i always wanted to be like not working a nine to five office job. Like I've always loved the idea of being my own boss. I always loved the idea of being some kind of figure, you know what I mean? Some kind of, just somebody, bro. But I didn't know exactly what, okay? And I also loved YouTube, you feel me? So I was like, hmm, I mean, I could be a YouTuber. And I thought about that for a long time. 
once I got over my fear of putting myself out there on the internet and I actually indulged into it, I found out like, yeah, okay, I am passionate about making content, okay? And it took me a while, but as I started to make content, my purpose started to become clear. There's a piece of paper back there on top of my bed and it literally, I've literally written down my purpose. I found my purpose in this, which is to spread a message, right? My purpose is to help people physically, mentally, emotionally, and to help people find true salvation in God. That is my purpose. And now you might be sitting there being like, dang, that's way better than my purpose. But understand that your purpose is just as valid as mine. They're at the same level because we've all been blessed to be alive in the first place. You understand what I'm saying, bro? So as long as you have a why for what you're doing, it can be any why. doesn't matter. It's all good, bro. That is your purpose. Indulge in that. Make that a priority in your life. You know what I mean? Especially if it's something that makes you money. Now, when I say makes you money, again, it can't be a worldly thing. So if your purpose is something like, oh, uh, I, my purpose is to make a lot of money. My purpose is to get a lot of women. That's not a purpose. That's something that you want to do. That's just like a worldly thing. It's very shallow and nothing like that. You have to understand that uh, purpose is, is something that's deeper than that. Something that you do regardless of how much money it makes. That, and that's just what it is. So moving on from that, what you have to understand is that those are the two biggest things, physical and purpose, right? Uh, physical health and purpose. Once you get those things down, oh, and understand that there's a, a like emotional uh, development, emotional control and things of that nature, but we'll probably get to that in another video or something like that. But the third, these are the, just the three most important things. The third thing is this, you have to find a deeper understanding for life. You have to find something even deeper because purpose, yeah, it's cool, but it's still somewhat worldly. You have to find an even deeper reason. Why is that your purpose? The purpose is already a why, but why is your why? You have to find a deeper, deeper understanding, which is why I be trying to tell y'all that you need to find God. Look, here's the thing, bro. I know a lot of people probably watching this. You might be an atheist or you probably a different religion or whatever the case may be. But this is what I'm trying to tell you, dog. Ultimately, we all have the same fate. We are all going to die one day. And you must understand that. And when you die, you have the same fate as everybody else. Whether you have the same fate as the richest man in the world and you have the same fate as the most homeless person in the world. You have the exact same fate. Doesn't matter what you have. Doesn't matter who you talk to. Doesn't matter what you look like. You are going to die and you're going to go to heaven or hell. That's just the facts. And it doesn't matter if you don't believe it. Oh, well, I don't believe in that stuff. Well, you don't have to believe in it, dog. You don't have to believe in something for it to be real. I mean, and that, so that's totally up to you whether or not you want to believe it. But understand that there's a deeper basis for things. So once you start to realize that everybody has the same fate you come to the realization that everything in this world is meaningless everything in this world is meaningless without god everything in this world means nothing because we're all going to die there's nothing new under the sun when you pass away somebody else is going to have the same ambitions that you had people are going to forget that you existed there will always be a next man up everything that you do is pretty much meaningless. That is why you have to find a deeper, deeper understanding beyond worldly things. Because this world is temporary. This world means nothing. You have to understand that after you pass away, that's eternity. You only live a few short decades on this earth. After this is eternity. Eternity versus a few short decades. What do you think is more important? Your few short decades on this earth literally do not matter. That's why you have to find God, because then you find a deeper understanding. You have a much deeper basis. Now you have a basis for morality because you have to understand that we are in this world. We are not of it. Right. So that's why God gives us a blueprint of how we're supposed to live, because, I mean, we still here. So that's why you have to. Uh, uh, that's why you got to follow his word. That's why he gives us a, a, a basis for morals, relationships, anything that you need an answer for. He's given us an answer already, whether you believe it or not. I mean, dude, the, the red pill, if you look in the Bible, it literally say the same things. Or not the exact same things, 
Okay, but as far as how a relationship should go, how a woman should submit to a man, all those, that's in the Bible, dude. You think people just came up with this just out of they just pulled it out their ass? There has to be a deeper basis for things. Because if you don't have a deeper basis for things, let me tell you something. The things that do matter, you will always have a ceiling. So the things that do matter include peace, happiness, fulfillment, how you actually feel. Understand that when you when you follow God instead of worldly things, your ceiling for how you actually feel, like your true fulfillment and your peace and your happiness is way higher than that of someone who doesn't believe. So if you don't believe, I hate to tell you this, I hate to, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you can self-improve all you want, but you're always going to hit this ceiling because you don't have the truth in you. You don't have the Holy Spirit in you. So you're going to always hit this ceiling right here. You ain't never really, you can self-improve and look good and and, 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 and all that. You can find your purpose, but you ain't never going to get past this ceiling. You'll always struggle with finding peace. You'll always struggle with, with, with something. Something is always going to be up. You're always going to have some sort of, sort of anxiety. About There's always going to be some sort of problems because you don't have the truth. You don't have the real answers. Someone that does have the real answers that follow God, bro, your ceiling is, ooh, wait, you can't even see it. It's way up here, bro. Your peace and, your, and, 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 and how you feel, your happiness, your fulfillment is way up here, bro. It's infinite because you understand that following worldly things is meaningless. You understand that everything in this life is meaningless. So bottom line is this. If you do not believe in anything deeper, if you don't believe in God, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but your self-improvement is meaningless. Because everything that you're working for is meaningless. Everything that you do is meaningless. Your life is meaningless and i don't mean that in a disrespectful way but all i'm saying is that you're gonna pass away just like everybody else like you know it is what it is and you know i'm right you know i'm right you have to find a deeper meaning you have to ask there has to be a why to your purpose why is this my purpose because god has blessed me with this purpose this is what the lord wants me to do while i'm on this earth so i'm gonna do it it's that simple once you find this, you don't have to worry about anything else. You won't even have to worry about emotional control and working on your personality and taking steps to do this and anxiety and all that. Because the Lord literally takes care of all of that. He says, cast your anxieties on him. You won't even have to worry about money or, or, or just being OK in this world, because in the Bible, it say it say seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. All things will be added to you if you seek God first. So you ain't even gonna have you don't even have to worry about money and all of that. You don't have to worry about it. There's nothing to worry about. That is the ultimate self-improvement. But most people don't want to hear it because you don't want that answer. That's the truth. And the truth is 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 ugly, right? You wanted to hear some kind of worldly answer. Like you wanted me to sit here and tell you to meditate. You wanted me to sit here and tell you to meditate, and you'll have all the answers and you will be at peace and all this. That don't do nothing for you. I've been down that road. Nothing in this world can actually give you peace. Only the Lord can, bro. That's the ultimate self-improvement. So if you're not if you're not seeking God, bro, you know what I mean? Your self-improvement is for nothing. It doesn't matter what you do. You think I'm lying? You'll learn. Love y'all out here, man. Peace.